Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks so much for joining me on Thursday, the last Thursday of February. Believe it or not, next Tuesday is March 1st. Um, I still settle in with the dream I had about March being a difficult month, a gray dark, a gray month getting darker, and September being crazy. But if you're watching the news right now, you know that there is a whole lot of stuff going on happening. Um, you've got fights near... Uh, Night uh, fights going on near Chernobyl, uh, just north of Kiev. You've got a lot of bombing going on. There's just a, a video that I was just sent that showed a, a Russian jet coming up, maneuvering, and then dropping a missile, hitting something uh, next door. So um, crazy things are happening. Also, uh, China is uh, pushing towards Taiwan. Matter of fact, Taiwan's basically said, hey, Everybody needs to wake up and watch what's going on over here. Of course, America's eyes are all turned on what's happening in Russia and Ukraine. Uh, and, you know, if you know the story on Crimea, I, I want to talk a little bit politically. Crimea is just south of Ukraine in the Black Sea. And in 2014, Russia just kind of marched in, took it over, and nobody said a word. And I know a lot of the powers that be are talking hard sanctions. We're not going to let down. And, you know, John Kerry... His main concern right now is that this is going to distract from uh, global warming and getting something done in global warming. Even the people in Washington D.C. have the wrong perspective. They're not looking at this. They're not looking at this through the spiritual eyes. They're seeing it as an inconvenience, an opportunity for war, a way to possibly declare martial law in the future. I can see it going that way. <clears throat> but the point is, things are heating up. You woke up in this this morning into a far different America than you went to sleep in last night. And what I mean by that is um, gas prices are going up all over the country. I have heard not from one, not from two, not from five, not from 10, but about 12 people today, just this morning, who had gone to banks and had trouble uh, withdrawing some things. So um, that tells you, and I'm talking, you know, eight, eight or nine different states from the people who contacted me. Uh, we also know that things are happening. Um, things are happening with the military. I'm sure um, with this happening in Europe and us being a NATO nation, we may be called upon. Poland's already starting to see a lot of folks rushing their way. Uh, you've got the Russian flags being put up all over the place in Russia. There's a lot of good maps that show what's happening, what's going on. We know there is bombing. People have died. Uh, things are getting crazy. And the first and most important thing that we cannot do as believers is lose our head or lose our faith or lose our courage or our boldness to speak the truth in love in light of all these things. And more than anything, we cannot afford to fear and be afraid. God's not given us a spirit of fear. So if, if you're looking at the news and all you're thinking is, you know, go hide in the basement, the bunker and this and that, your, your face not working like it needs to. You need to say, okay, God. I don't like what I'm seeing. I don't like what I'm hearing. But I'm going to trust you to, to, to use me and, and take care of me in the process. But, Father, I'm asking you to use me today for your glory. There are people who have no idea anything was even going on in Ukraine. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to get gas today, this morning. Uh, I thought it might be best to fill up because uh, our gas already had gone up by around 11 cents overnight. So I filled up. And uh, while I was there, I was the people were coming in and, and one guy was like, man, gas has gone up. You know, what's going on? I said, well, there's a Russia invaded Ukraine last night. Who? Russia invaded Ukraine last night. What's that mean? Oh, no idea. And I'm talking, to, you know, de decently young guy, probably in his 40s. He said, well, should I be concerned? I said, well, gas just went up by 11 cents. So uh, you might want to be concerned about that. Eh, I'm all right. I'm in the bank. I was thinking, Maybe. But you never know what's going on, what's happening. So we got to make sure we don't get afraid. We don't we don't become fearful of the things that are happening. So it can't be, oh, my goodness, the sky is falling. We know we knew the sky was going to fall. We knew the difficult times were coming. We knew the perilous times were coming. So what do we do? We get full of the Holy Spirit and we stand strong. And we face those things head on. In Psalm 37 today, I want to start here. Do not fret because of evildoers. Do not fret because of evildoers. Be not envious towards wrongdoers, for they will wither quickly like grass, and fade like the green herb. <coughs> Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and cultivate faithfulness. Plant that stuff. Live it out. Be faithful in all you do and all you say. 
Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. This doesn't mean he's going to give you what you want. It means as your heart lines up with God's plan, God's purpose, he will He will let the desires of your heart, they're going to, your desires of your heart are going to be what God wants for your community, your neighborhood, your area, uh, your calling, your life. Commit your way to the Lord, trust also in him, and he will do it. And he will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your judgment as noonday. In other words, he says, if you live for me and do it right, I'll make sure everybody knows who you are and who you serve in that regards. And that, folks, matters in today's world, especially the things that we're seeing right now, the things that are happening and the things that are going on. I want to talk, in, I want to talk out of Romans. And, and, but I also want to just let me show you just a couple of headlines that I pulled up in just the last few hours. Fox News, John Kerry fears Russia-Ukraine war will distract from climate change. People are dying. Houses and businesses and military bases are being ran over. And all he cares about is climate change distraction? Park your plane, Mr. Kerry, and, and, and get in the real world. I'm not trying to be offensive, but that stuff bothers me. People are dying. Houses and homes are being bombed. European natural gas jumps 60%. That was today. European natural gas jumps 60% based on the fact that they went in last night. To the, um, Goldman Sachs is going to be looking at something. What does the Ukraine war mean for what the Fed does next? That's some things to be interesting you know, to be watching. Taiwan warns Chinese aircraft flying in air defense zone day of Russia, Ukraine invasion. So those are the things that are going on. Those things are happening. Chinese jets approach Taiwan as Beijing blasts U.S. for fueling fires and lead up to Ukraine invasion. So basically China's saying, America, you did all this. But America, you did all this. And meanwhile, their planes are flying near Taiwan. I put on my Facebook page just, just a little bit ago, uh, the prayer guide I, I, I just kind of felt led to do. We're going to be praying through Psalm 27. And that prayer guide, pray, you're praying through that through that word, that psalm that David wrote. But there's a lot of different things on there to pray about. We're praying the word. We're also praying about your local city, your local church, your local state. We're also praying for Washington D.C. The, the elected officials there to repent and to uh, and to for for the corruption to be exposed. It's there. So all those things are there. And uh, so you can access that online. If you need me to send it to you as an attachment, just send me an email and I'll send it to you. But uh, this is where we are today. This is where we are. Matter of fact, someone sent me a Fox News article and it said, Russia invades from the north, the east, and the south. And they tried to link it to just the word that God gave me. I still believe that word was for our nation. That can have practical purposes elsewhere. But the point is, we're seeing some incredible things happen in the world right now. So uh, the acceleration and the time frame has gotten absolutely crazy. It's ridiculous. It's happening so quickly. You cannot keep up with all the things that are happening. I want to start reading in verse uh, 12. I'm going to start verse 18. And Paul's talking in Romans about the future. The spirit assures the future glory. For I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that's be revealed to us. He said, look, I know it's hard and tough sometimes in life, but realize this. Whatever you face here will be soon forgotten when you're there in his presence. My email address, the best one to catch me at is this. RealDanaCoverstone at gmail.com. RealDanaCoverstone at gmail.com. It's not the Dana the Real. It's just Dana, RealDanaCoverstone.com or RealDanaCoverstone at gmail.com. For the anxious longing of the creation awaits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. Even the, even, even the natural aspect of this planet is crying out and things are happening and things are going on. Even the earth realizes that restoration is coming. Something is about to be birth. For the creation was subjected to, to futility. Not of its own will, but because of him who subjected it in hope. That the creation itself also will be set free from slavery to corruption. You know, the freedom of the glory of the children of God. In other words, this earth, this earth is waiting and crying out for the millennial reign when we rule and we reign with Christ. And you want to talk about taking care of the planet? That'll be done then because we'll be the caretakers. We'll be those that, that rule and reign with Christ and serve him all around the world. For you know the whole creation groans and suffers. 
the pains of childbirth together until now. For we know the whole creation groans and suffers the pains of childbirth together until now. So, folks, we don't get scared. We don't get afraid. We don't think, oh, my goodness, what's going on? I, look, my phone has rang off the hook all day long, even even, even some of the phone calls at our church today uh, and yesterday. Well, what happens? You know, I, I'm not prepared. I've not done this. I've not done that. What should I do? What should I do? What should I do? Pray and ask God to give you wisdom. Pray and ask God to show you what to do and how to get these things done, how to, how to, how to get prepared for the things that are coming. And not only this, but also we ourselves having the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting eagerly for our adoption as sons, redemption of our body. Now we forget, we forget that even our bodies groan. Even our bodies groan. The age, the things that have happened shifted and changed in our, in our bodies as we've gotten older. All those things become more and more suspect. And, you know, the closer I get to 60, I know once I get to 60, I'll be looking at 70. But I know this, I'm going to get older no matter what happens. Nothing's going to change that. No vitamin, no pill, no drill, no surgery. Nothing is going to be able to take care of that and change me from aging because outward man perishes, but the inward man is renewed day by day. The point is, Paul is saying, look, even our bodies are growing. Even our bodies are anticipating. I don't know about you, but I look forward to a glorified body. And not that I'll be tall or have hair. That doesn't matter. I just look forward to having a body that will never age, never die, never be weak. We ourselves, having the first fruit of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan with ourselves, within ourselves. We groan within ourselves. These bodies, these bodies are groaning. Because... We are close enough to his return. We see the signs of things that are happening around us. And we know without beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is working and moving in us with us and through us. And so we can see those things out there. But we cannot get, we cannot get fearful. We cannot lose the boldness. We cannot lose the, the fearlessness that comes with being a believer and being baptized in the spirit full of God's power and God's glory. For in hope we have been saved. But hope that is not that is seen is not hope. What is also one hope for what he sees? The things which are seen are temporal. The things which are not seen are eternal. We have got to see what's happening in our world today with spiritual eyes. A lot of comments. Why you? Why would Russia want Ukraine? Are you folks aware that after the wall fell in 1989, that and all the the nation the, the the Russian nations became their own, like Latvia, Lithuania, and places like that, and Ukraine, so to speak. Are you aware that Ukraine was the third largest nuclear nation on the planet, based on what had been left there? Now, I personally believe, I personally believe that probably that's part of the reason he wants Ukraine. Because right now what we're seeing is a, is a, they are striving for power. People are, are, are jockeying for position. We saw Trudeau do that in the last two weeks. We're seeing Macron in France do that. We're seeing Boris Johnson try to keep his position in his place. I really have no clue. I mean this in, in, in a respect. I have no clue what's going on here in our White House. I believe the White House is still empty. For in hope we've been saved, but hope that is seen is not hope. In other words, we've got to look beyond the things that we see. Back in 1990, I, st I stopped. I was on my way from Warsaw to Russia, to, to Moscow. So on a train. And we got to a, a place called Brest. And when we got, right before we got to the stop, the, one of the conductor people on the train came back and said, and that really thick Russian accent, whatever you do, do not get off at this stop. Do not get off at this. Do not get off at this stop and don't buy any food here. And we said, what? Okay, don't get He's like, don't get off. Just trust me. Well, well why? He said, it has to do with Pripyat and Chernobyl. So what I found out later was we pull up to the, we pull up to the, the, the place where you get off and, and you see there's people out there selling food and, and you can also see that there, there's animals and, and, and there's people taking pictures of these animals. And, and, uh, and I realized a couple things, first of all, 
some of all the people that were there selling food and making things had some type of uh, physical handicap. All the animals, like there was a, there was a cow with a leg coming out of its side. There were goats that were very deformed. Uh, a lot of the children that were there you know, were just off of that spot. And I realized what I was saying was that people who who got pushed out because of Chernobyl, which happened back on the early late eighties would come there and sell food and they would, and that was the only way they could make their livelihood. So I have no idea if there was radioactivity or anything like that, but I remember sitting, sitting there on that train and, 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 the, and, the, and the whistle went off and the train took off and watching people who obviously had been through a whole lot in Chernobyl and were, were, were dealing with the physical manifestations of radioactivity. So when, you you hear of uh, when you hear of the things that are going on. When you hear of the things that are going on around Chernobyl right now and Russian troops on the ground, do you? I mean, imagine imagine an enemy getting a hold of a place like Chernobyl. You could bomb. Well, I'm not. I better be careful what I say. But you know, there's already been warnings throughout Western Europe that there could be a, there could be a, a fallout cloud. A uh, radioactive fallout cloud that hits the you know Western Europe because of the way the wind's moving things. So who knows what could happen? But once again, are we going to sit around and be afraid and scared, afraid and be afraid and scared of what's going on, what's going to happen, what could happen? You know, the world rides on the word if. Well, what if, what if, what if this happens here? What if that happens tomorrow? I could drop dead before the end of this podcast, and if I do, it's not COVID. I know that, but nonetheless. You can tell them it was the it was the five G towers in our area or something. I don't care what you tell them, but nonetheless, the point is this: for in hope we've been saved, but hope that is seen is not hope. Why does also one hope for what he sees? My hope is in faith, in, in, in my faith in Christ. My hope is in the Jesus I know that is real, exists, and loves me, makes a difference in my life, protects me, keeps me. But if we hope for what we do not see with perseverance, for if we hope for what we do not see with perseverance, we wait eagerly for it. And that's the key. I don't have a problem having faith in something I can't see because I know I feel his presence. I know that God is real. I know that God is genuine. I see and feel and hear what he does in my life every day. And in the same way, the spirit also helps our weaknesses. For we do not know how to pray as we should, but the spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he searches the hearts. And he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And so often we we throw this this last verse 28 just out there as the typical Christian. We all got this done. We know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called upon his purpose. In other words, God knows ahead of times all the things that have happened, all the things that happened in your life that brought you to the place that you are. He knows what's going to happen in the next 35 seconds. He knows what's going to, he knows what word, he knows what your next thought's going to be. He knows the, every thought for the rest of your life until you draw your last breath or you're taken before the, before the way of the grave. He knows. He knows. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us. And right now, I'm going to challenge as many of you that are baptized in the Spirit and Spirit-filled and speaking tongues to really go into warfare prayer. To go into that place where you're groaning in the Spirit. And He's praying through you. Because right now, the wrestling match just became a gunfight. They've already thrown the knives down. They pulled out the guns. And you don't bring a gun to a knife fight. So we're, we're, in a, we're in a real serious spiritual battle right now. A very, very sp- big spiritual battle. And not just that, because once again, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. The enemy is at work. The enemy, the enemy is not at the gates. The enemy is already through the gates. And he's making his way towards you and towards me. So we've got to be braced for impact. We've got to be equipped. We've got to have the power. We've got to, have the, the arm, we've got to be armored up, sword sharp, shield up. That, I'm telling you. That's what we got to be. That's what what that's what's going on. The church that I pastor is Living Word Ministries in Burksville, Kentucky. So, folks, we got to pray. We got to search. We got to search the word. We got to stand strong on what we know, and we can't give in to fear. We cannot give in to fear. I told a board member last night. He came to church, and he's like, "Man, you can't." I said, "Man, I am so. I have this incredible heaviness in my heart last night." I, and and waking up this morning, I was like, "Now I know why the heaviness was there because a lot happened overnight." I have friends 
uh, who are missionaries and have been pastors and people I've met from all over the world. So I, I'm, I'm getting emails and messages from people who are in Ukraine, who are even telling me weeks ago they were they were watching things very, 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 very clearly, you know, closely about what was happening, what was going on. You see that people are already trying to get out of Kiev right today. But I'm talking about folks who said we got to stay. God's called us to stay. God's called me to stay is what they're saying. And so I'm saying the Lord use them, use their life, help them. Do what you have to do, but be a witness. Because, you know, there's no atheists in foxholes. That's been said many, many times. But the point of it is when the, when the bullets start flying, the missiles start hitting. People start thinking about the fact that they could die. And so as you, as, as you pray today, I want, us, I want us to pray specifically for what's happening there and with China. But I also want to pray that God wakes people up in America. That God wakes, I, I told you I had a lot of people that told me they went to get some things, you know, to, to do some things at the banks. And some of them could be taken care of. And some of them were told, hey, you're going to come back next week. Or, hey, can you come back on Friday? Or, or we, you know, and I'm not talking about people who were taken out a whole lot. I'm talking about people who went in for you know, small amounts, big amounts, middle amount, middle amounts, but nonetheless, everything we're going to have, everything that's going to be, is going on. Everything that's going on. We've been warned about, we've been told, some have warned, some have had dreams, some have had prophetic words. We've been saying these things are coming. And so if you're prepared, you're prepared. If you're not prepared, you're not prepared. I made some last minute, last minute purchases yesterday and I, and I woke up thinking, I hope they're able to get here, you know, with trucking and stuff like that going on. Things are happening. Things are happening quickly. Things are happening quickly. Uh, exponentially, things are, 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 they're, they're ratcheting up. Folks, I don't want you to be scared. I don't want you to be dealing with fear and afraid. You know, if, if I would have, if, if I would have been if, if if I would have been terrified when I shared my first dream, I would have built a bunker and never come out again. You never you, didn't, you never would have heard from me past June twenty fourth of two thousand twenty. But we're supposed to occupy until he comes, and that's a military word. We are to occupy until he comes. That means you hold the ground, you stay braced, and when the enemy hits you, you just keep standing so you're not pushed back any further. Because in the military aspect of what's happening in, in Ukraine. Putin is trying to gain ground. He's trying to take it back. Anytime the enemy comes in, he's going to take ground back. Don't give it up. Don't let it go. Keep fighting, folks. Because the groanings and the birth pains, they are obvious. The groanings and the birth pains, they are evident. Nobody can say, <coughs> you never told me about that. You never warned me about that. We've been talking about Russia and Ukraine at least for two months. Uh, I know some of my podcasts and things, and others have talked about them for, for a long time. 2015, a, a, a political analyst that worked at University of Chicago, basically I shared that morning on my Pray With Me, basically said, look, you folks are leading, you're leading Ukraine down this primrose path, and one day they're going to be in a major wreck. Well, that wreck started a couple months ago, and now they've been hit so hard they can't walk. I don't know how long it's going to take for Russia to take over the entire nation of Ukraine, but you start taking out the military, you start taking out the military bases, you start taking out places like Chernobyl, or you start taking that ground, pretty soon, pretty soon, pretty soon, things begin to shift and change. And remember, Putin moved into Crimea, which is just south of Ukraine, in the Black Sea, he just moved in, set up shop. Everybody pointed their finger and said, "We're going to do sanctions." And guess what? Those things didn't mean a thing to him. Putin's playing chess, and some of the world leaders are playing go fish. He's moving pieces. He knows what he's doing. And we got to realize the Antichrist is at work. The spirit of Antichrist is at work. The spirit of Antichrist is at work right now, paving the way for the Antichrist to walk in. And there's going to be certain situations happening in the nation and the nations around the world that will combine for them to say, we need a man. We need one man to step up and take care of this. And we're very, very, very close to that. And just like Mel said, yes, he is. He's a, he's a, 
He's a he's a very good chess player. A very good chess player. And you know, Russians are known for being good at chess. And some of the time I spent in Moscow, I got a chance to, to watch some of those guys in those parks play with those with those uh the cement tables that they have set up in different parks and things. Um and I got to watch some guys, you know, take hours to play a game and just real real methodical. They took their time. That's what's happening. Enemies already at work, enemies at the gate. The spirit of Antichrist is already here. And I'll be, you know, personally, I believe that probably the person who is the Antichrist is probably alive. Now, if I'm wrong, hey, I'm wrong. I think Hal Lindsey wrote a book, The Antichrist is Alive and Well on Planet Earth, or something like that. I just say what I think when I'm sensing out there. All I know is this this is not the time to be afraid to back down. This is not the time to walk away from the church. It's not a time to walk away from faith. This is the time to get solid, stable, serious, rooted, grounded, and ready for whatever is coming our way. We've been warning. We've been warning, brace yourself. And I think, you know, we've already seen gas go up in my little town by 11 cents overnight. Uh, we're already starting to see things happen around the world uh, in different ways. We're already starting to see NATO and meetings and, and people talking. And a lot of people are doing this. They're pointing their finger at Putin. But what are they really doing about it? Ask, ask Crimea. If they can appreciate anything that the United Nations or NATO did for them when Russia moved into Crimea. So we have to understand something. Yes, I believe in a rapture. I do not believe that the church does not give any, any, that the church goes through totally unscathed. I do not believe that by any means. And if your hope is that the church, you know, doesn't have any issues or problems, then why did why did why did the Bible say that you know judgment begins in the house of God? Why did Peter say that? Because he was trying to say, look, folks, perilous times come, just like in the, in the last days, I'll pour my spirit out on all flesh. So, folks, things are going on. So, stay faithful, stay on top of it, keep living your life for Jesus. Don't surrender, don't give in, don't give up. Let's pray, Lord. We're seeing some crazy things happen in Ukraine today. And I pray, I, I'm going to pray, Lord, that, that you, would, you would provide safety around the Chernobyl uh, zone where they've got that sarcophagus over the, over the former uh, nuclear uh, meltdown. I'm praying, God, that that will not become an issue that causes major problems because that would be more than just life-threatening. It would, it would ruin parts of, that, of, the, of the country there. And I pray you, you would guard and protect the Ukrainian people. Lord, even so, was, was Zelensky, the president, was basically saying he would hand, he would hand his citizens weapons so they could fight for their nation. And while I see the nobility in that, God, I'm also, I also see the potential for them to go up against Russian soldiers who are superiorly armed and armed and, 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 and armored up and, and have uh, even better weapons than guns. So, Lord, please help the Ukrainian people. I know there's going to be a lot of refugees, a lot of people trying to get out. Keep those people safe as they're getting out. And I pray, Lord, that even if uh, as wars begin, I pray, God, that there will not be, there will be a hand. God, I'm praying for mercy. Let people be spared. Let people be saved. Let there be a lot of the Ukrainian people that, that are not that are not bombed out or hurt or killed. I'm just praying, God, for your mercy on their people. And I'm praying, Lord, you would bring conviction to Vladimir Putin. I'm praying you bring conviction to the leaders around the world about what they should do and why they should do it and when they should get it done. Because, Lord, right now it's too late for the people who've already been killed outside of, of Kiev and in some of those other, other places where, where, Russian, where Russian supporters are there. Lord, I saw a video today of, 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 of the Ukrainians welcoming some of these Russian people, as, as the soldiers, as Russian peacekeepers. And they don't realize that behind, behind the, 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 the badge, behind the uniform, behind everything, there is a national leader who is pushing to take over these areas. Father, I pray you wake people up. Wake the people up, Lord, who have been slumbering and sleeping at church in their walk with the Lord in their spiritual life. Father God, I pray you shake the church. Shake the church and wake the church. Especially move there in Russia, Ukraine. And also, Lord, that you would be moving with the people of Taiwan. Because as we're watching the news, it's already saying that, that, that China is sending, sending uh, uh, planes and missiles and all sorts of things towards Taiwan. And they're, and they're going to they're gonna take advantage of, of, of the distraction of what's happening in, in Eastern Europe. So, God, we cannot fight a war on two fronts, not with China, not with Ukraine, not with Russia. Not, there's no way. Lord, we have, we, have a, we have a military that has become weakened in some sense. We have situations that are going on. 
So we need your hand of mercy. Raise up an army of people who will, who will pray for our, our soldiers, who will pray for our nation, who will pray for the nation of Ukraine and Taiwan, who will pray against, uh, pray against Lord, the leaders that are, that are coming against them in that regard. And Lord, that we see these people come to Christ. Lord, I prayed this morning that Putin would have a dream. I pray you give him a dream about what's going to happen if he keeps this up from you. Lord, not from man, but from you. You show him what's going on. Help him to come back to a place of repentance with you. God, touch our nation. Touch our nation because there are things happening so quickly that nobody can keep up with it. So we need to see. We need to know. Help us to walk in the Spirit. Help us to live by the Spirit, Lord. Because that's absolutely necessary today. And give us great discernment. Because any believer without discernment right now is going to struggle to make and do any impact, have any impact on this world. So God, give us discernment in an overwhelming way. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, folks, thanks for coming on. And, and, and uh, I know it's not necessarily pray with me, but thanks for praying with me at the end. Uh, keep Taiwan and Ukraine in your prayers. Um, keep um, the nations where some of these... Uh, some of the uh, the new laws have become almost very, very tyrannical and push, there's been pushed back in some nations. I'm grateful for that. But pray for the protesters. Pray for the trucking thing that's going on in this country. And uh, let me just say one quick thing about that. Folks, you need to pray and make sure you've heard from God before you go anywhere and do anything with any type of public protest that's, that's made against our government. Uh, I'm going back and looking at, you know, there was, there was the sixth day of the month sometime last year when things got really kind of difficult. And um, I just, I have, I, I like many others have grave concerns about folks wanting to jump in this, in this, uh, in this convoy and, and head to Washington, DC. Uh, National Guard's already been you know, deployed. 700 National Guard units have been deployed to Washington, DC. They're looking for, uh, for uh, lifts and wrecking car, wrecking trucks to you know, haul these trucks and things off. So, Man, I'm going to say it like I think it was Hill Street Blues. Let's be careful out there. Make sure. It may have been something else, but I, I think that was it. But let's be careful out there, folks. Use good common sense and listen, listen, listen to the Holy Spirit in your life. All right. Hey, folks, God bless. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you in the morning for Pray With Me. And all, well, let me say one more thing. That our prayer meeting on March 1st and 3rd, that's a Tuesday, Thursday. We're going to live stream that from a sanctuary. And I'm going to encourage people from our community, from our church, to come and pray with us. I know it's a Tuesday, Thursday. It's the first and third day of the month. And I felt that those are two significant days. Because of my, I have almost every Saturday, every Saturday in March, there's something already planned and going on. So we're going to, we're, we'll live stream that, that one-hour prayer time on Tuesday, March the 1st, and Thursday, March the 3rd, and see what the Lord wants to do. And if you're close enough and want to come, hey, we would love to have you come and be a part of that. But we're going to pray. The prayer guide is on my Facebook page. I can send it to you via email as well as an attachment. Just send me an email at realdanacoverstone at gmail.com, and I'll get that to you, all right? Hey, folks, thanks for being with us. Thanks for praying, and uh, stay strong. God bless.